and Brendan here from Games Brains the Headbanging Live, and we are doing an exclamation for this time. I'm going to start that again. Didn't like the way I said it. Carl and Brendan here from Games Brains the Headbanging Live, gbhbl.com for short, and it is another episode of the exclamation series where we are looking at a more fun one, dare I say, a less serious one. You know, a lot of the topics are always going to be based around serious things. This one, it is the Osborne's TV show. Remember that thing? That was a thing. It was an American reality television program featuring the domestic life of heavy metal singer Ozzy Osbourne and his family. The series premiered on MTV on March 5th, 2002, and in its first season was cited as the most viewed series ever on MTV. The final episode aired on March 21st, 2005, which I thought was weird. I was like, wait, that only ran for three years. I thought it ran for like a decade. Like it felt like that it ran was- forever. It, it, it sounds like it was short because it's just three seasons, but I was just looking at like the names of the episodes. There were 52 episodes. Oh, you wow. Know, so. Oh, that's one a week. 52 weeks. Well, one, one, they wouldn't have done season one, two, and three consecutively, though, would they? No, sorry, I'm saying 52, 52 episodes across the whole thing. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I understand. I thought it was 52 per season, and I was like, oh, oh my God, God, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, In addition to heavy metal musician Ozzy Osbourne, the show features his wife and manager Sharon and their children, Jack and Kelly. The Osbournes have another daughter, Amy, but she refused to participate in the show and publicly criticised her parents for their antics on the show. In most family photos shown on the show, she's either absent or blurred. Uh, The series also followed the family as they dealt with major events such as Sharon's battle with cancer and the aftermath of the ATV accident that nearly killed Ozzy Osbourne. Right. First question is this, ignoring what you know about the show today, what were your thoughts on the family, the family unit that you're aware of in the early days? Of the show or just generally? The Osbournes, yeah. I wasn't aware of the family. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, I I knew who Sharon Osbourne was, don't get me wrong, but not to the point of like a household name to me. You know, I knew Ozzy, that's it, like... Never really think of Ozzy having a family, <laughs> like back in the day. No, I I, I agree. I never, th- I didn't know. I, I, it's hard to sort of cast your mind back when you didn't know the likes of who Kelly Osborne or Jack Osborne were. But yep. I'm like, yeah, definitely no way I remembered who or even heard of them. I don't even, I might have heard about Sean Osborne on the thing, but I wasn't paying attention to that because... I think I, I potentially heard of Sharon Osborne because like, you know, the, the sort of public spats and stuff between Ozzy and, and her... The strangling, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Being generally, you know, tomfoolery. Tomfoolery. <laughs> that word again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you, then when you kind of like saw the family as they were in the Osborne's TV show, did you find yourself, well, did you, put, I'm going to put it bluntly. Did you like them? Well, I mean, the first thing, let me, let me start off by saying that I did not watch the Osborne's mm-hmm. uh, like, you know, sort of when it was on. Yeah. Um, I've definitely seen some of the Osborns. Uh, I, you know, I've seen clips. I think I've seen the odd full episode as well. Yep. So I'm very aware of like, you know, I'm very aware of it. Don't get me wrong, massively aware of it. But I wasn't a fan. I wouldn't have watched it even if I wanted to, because to me it was a bit anti what I thought I wanted out of metal. Ooh. Um I didn't like the idea of Ozzy, King Godfather of Metal and all this sort of stuff being on MTV Mm. um, in a reality show. Just like I wouldn't now if somebody turned around and said, oh, Danny Phil's going into Big Brother. I wouldn't be okay with that either. Oh, Uh, love it. (laughs) Oh, don't get me wrong. It'd be entertaining, but it was kind of... It kind of... (sighs) I'm not saying that I hate saying this, but I'm just trying to put myself back into how I would have been when I was young. But this is not yeah. necessarily a reflection of how I am today. Mm-hmm. I would have seen it as a sort of sellout thing. I yeah. know you would, I know it's the word you're dancing around. I 100% agree. I never watched it back in the day either. I didn't even really, I knew it existed, but I wasn't paying attention. Um, I wouldn't even call myself an Aussie fan back then. However, it was something when I got older that I actually actively sought out and was like, look, I, I want right. to watch this. I want to see what it was. And be honest, most of the time, it's nonsense. It was always nonsense to me. I don't think I ever fully finished it. So I can't even say I was a fan on that front. But yeah. it's mainly that cast your mind back and think, okay, when you did become aware of it and you found out about a family unit and all that, 
What did you think of that show persona of Ozzy, Sharon, Kelly, Jack? The, the thing with anything I've ever seen in it, mm. I always felt Ozzy was maybe just because he's often blissfully unaware of what's happening around him right. in his life, was pretty much not really playing a role. Right. He was just being Ozzy. I agree with you on that 100%. Spending a lot of time running from the cameras and, you know, being just just being an Aussie man, what I'd expect from him, yep. you know? Um, and also I just, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I don't think anyone's given Aussie a script and he's learning it. <laughs> That's the truth of it. And if he was, he'd, re he'd return the words in such a way that everyone would know that these aren't his own words. But, but I always felt whenever I watched any of our episodes that the rest of the family were very aware of what it was. And it was more of a, we're playing to the camera mm. and we, this is going to sound really harsh, but hey, that's what we do. That's what I do. <laughs> I always felt like to me, like the family had a famous dad and they filmed themselves trying to capture him in it at the same time. Yeah. I watched so many clips from that, which is basically Ozzy saying fuck off like, to the cameras and trying to walk away. While when you watch Jack or Kelly or whatever, they're always to the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, dad, dad, come, we're going to make you do this. So it almost felt to me like, 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 the, like it was forced on him, like a little bit. I'm not saying it was, but, you know, it felt like, a, do I really think Ozzy wanted this or does Ozzy just not give a fuck either way? Mm -hmm. So who was it who wanted it? I doubt Ozzy sought out MTV yeah. to try and invite them into his house. But somebody must have. Mm -hmm. Do you think it, um, it made Ozzy look bad? Because obviously, famously, yeah. Ozzy looks a lot of the time pretty like... I mean, you, you look at the YouTube comments on an Oz1 episode and it's all, oh, proof that you shouldn't do drugs, kids, and stuff like that. It's always sort of like aimed at Ozzy because of his state of mind or behaviour in the episodes. Uh, do you know, I think there's maybe a double side to it, actually, because right. I do think it made him... I think it made him look stupid. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it did. It made him look like he was just like a bumbling Idiot. old fool. Yeah. yeah. But what I think that did for him, maybe in a way, was useful because not immediately around that time, mm. but I guess a lot of Ozzy's history when people who knew him, or sorry, who didn't know him but just knew headlines, was the geezer who bit the head off a bat, the guy who pissed on the Alamo, the guy who tried to choke out his wife, the guy who's a drug addict. Who's an Hellraiser. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess maybe what it did is kind of give him forgiveness for that stuff by going, oh, he's just a bumbling old idiot. But I'm not sure that's necessarily a, like a good thing. I'm not saying like, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not fucking advocating choking your wife at any point. You know, all of this stuff is bad stuff. But it was almost like portray him as a bit of an idiot because he, he'll then become a bit more of a media darling and people forget about the bad shit and be more like, Oh, poor Ozzy. Yeah. He, probably, he didn't mean to piss on the Alamo. He's just a silly old fool. <laughs> you know? I get the humanising thing, because it's certainly humanised and takes away that legend. And uh, obviously that upset quite a lot of the metal circles as well, because it didn't feel so legendary anymore. Instead, you're watching him shuffle around his house in his slippers, confused about... Like, I watched... Uh, I ended up watching a bunch of clips uh, the other day, trying to read... And I'd forgotten one, which is obviously the Blender... Now, if you know the show, you know the blender. He's making a smoothie, puts the blender on, walks away, sits there in a daze. Uh, the blender ends up smoking, going on, or smoking, like going out of that control. Yeah. He hears the fucking fire alarm going off, thinks it's the phone. Oh, hello? And it's just like, oh, God, yeah. this, is, this is bad, you know? Does it, does it, that shit don't need to be on camera. That's the thing. That's what I don't mm -hmm. like about it. But also, you're right. Like, um, I, I would put myself in the camp of the, you know, the, the metalheads who didn't want it to to be like that you know and rightly and he still is today we whether you love black sabbath or you love ozzy or not we all know what he did for metal and mm -hmm. he is rightly a legend within metal yeah uh, and that's correct even if you hate ozzy and black sabbath you can't deny the legacy yes um and you know what we're like man i would go up to my non-metal friends before the osbournes and be like now nah, look, this geezer Ozzy Osbourne is the fucking shit. You know, he's the king of metal. Like he, he's one of the founding fathers of it. You know, he's like, you know. And then next thing I know, I've got them coming up to me going, ah, <laughs> <laughs> king of metal is a bit of a fucking 
Steve, isn't he? <laughs> you know? So, yeah, John- yeah, you're right. It stripped him back, man. You're right. It humanized him, but you don't want to humanize a legend. No. And uh, don't ever watch the Who Stole My Beer clip because that will make you sad. And that is, and I, I, I mean, I've got no beef with Sharon Osbourne, but the way she speaks to him there, like he's a fucking goddamn child, yeah. basically. Oh, someone's been in my room and stole my beer. And she's like, has they? Who's the beer thief? And he's like, uh, and she's like, you're the beer thief. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just the worst. Going on, to, going on to that then, right? So we did before. What about now? Now, obviously, publicly, the issues that fell from the show, particularly with his children, is well known and so on. But time has changed things. Uh, I think the last thing, I think a while back, Jack and Ozzy did a show that was like a travel show together. And yeah, I watched quite, some of that. He's a fitness guy now, right, Jack? Right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. quite, quite buff, man, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like the family now, when you like, even with the Osmonds, when you look at like Sharon, you look at Ozzy, you look at Jack, and you look at Kelly, what's your thoughts on them now? I don't really have a lot. I mean, Sharon Osborne for me is a bit of an oddity, really, mm. because you know, she's kind of gone like obviously more down the route of like your, your, your uh, I assume it's America's Got Talent or, or whatever it is, or X Factors, yeah. and kind of being a judge and stuff like that, which is quite interesting because I know she was always in the music business to a degree. Mm. but like the, the the suddenly to be a judge of other people's uh, music ability I don't know it seems like a bit of a, bit of a leap to be honest with you yeah, but um, never really had an opinion on Kelly to be honest with you I know she had a like sort of short music career but yep. all this stuff okay. like all this stuff kind of got launched off the back of the Osbournes and that's why I often saw Ozzy almost being used as a donkey to carry other people to their step towards fame mm-hmm. now what i will say is i had no opinion on jack whatsoever like i you know i didn't dislike jack in the show i didn't like him particularly either because for the most part anytime i watched the show my my predominant feeling was sympathy for ozzy like this is bullshit man why are you filming this poor dude leave him alone that's mm-hmm. what i felt most of the time i did watch some of the i can't remember the name of it either but the the, the touring one with Ozzy and Jack. Yeah. And that's actually a really nice show. Okay. They, they're relatively, they, they talk to each other like a father and son. And they set each other, like Jack will take Ozzy to one place to show him things from his angle. And then the next day, Ozzy will take Jack to a place to show him things from his angle. It's a nice show. Cool. You know what I mean? It's not sat in their house trying to play up to a camera. They're out on a camper van. Ozzy drives at times as well, which bravery from Jack there. <laughs> Letting Ozzy drive this huge camper van on the big like in and all that. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> so I guess that, that maybe taints my view on Jack a little bit because I watched that and that's a nice show. Seeing like it's just a father-son relationship. It's really cool. You know? yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I pretty much share, me, share your views now. I didn't watch that show, but I, I, I've never really cared either or, which kind of brings me to the next thing, which is concurrent with the series, um, the success of the series. You've already mentioned a couple. Kelly Osborne launched a brief career as a singer. Well, Sharon Osborne hosted the Sharon Osborne show. So during that period, you know, a couple of people were trying to make a bit of success out of it and stuff yeah. like that. So let's talk about Kelly's solo career. How much of that did you pay attention to? The the duet with Ozzy. That's about as far as my attention span went. <laughs> well, then there it is. Uh, thoughts on the Changes duet, which is obviously the classic Balak Sabbath song done with Kelly and Ozzy. You know, the idea of it is nice. Yep. A father, daughter singing a pretty nice song together. Mm-hmm. And that's about the best I've got for it, to be honest with you, because it's not a particularly good version of it. The original is much better. Of course. Um, but it's not a horrible idea. Mm-hmm. But again, and I'm not saying that I'm right in this, but I was, I'm tainted by the fact that I always felt like, you know, that Ozzy was being ramroded <laughs> into things that they like to, to he was essentially being utilized as a stepping stone yep you know so we do a song with ozzy and then kelly you go off and do your career sharon's managing it ozzy's sitting there going leave me the fuck alone i mean i can't help but agree with you on that it is when i remember when changes of kelly osborne's and ozzy osborne's changes came out i remember what my thought process was at the time was like you just taken trying to use his song his song from sabbath his name to launch Pat Offit. Now, fair enough, that's his daughter. He may be more than happy with that. So that we have no right to be pissy about that. The issue is, is you're covering a song that is iconic Black Sabbath song. And there's the problem. It's not your original piece of work. You're going, ah, oh, this is a song that everybody really knows. 
and that's using that as a launch pad that I'm not so okay with, you know, yeah. that's, you know, that's the problem there. So overall then, who do you think came out of the show the best? Uh, who did the best out of it? Yeah. It'd probably be Sharon. Yeah. Sharon went on to become a, ha- a household name uh, on some of the biggest talent shows in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 but that, but that's from like I guess from a, she did the best out of it in terms of sort of iconic status, celebrity status. Yep. But I don't know if you were doing it from a heavy metal person's viewpoint. Mm. I don't think anyone came out of it well. No. <laughs> uh, including including MTV. Mm. That's the truth of it as well, because what MTV essentially did for fifty two episodes was film a man who didn't seem to want to be filmed yeah and follow him around when he tells them to fuck off and they shove the camera in to try and see if we can catch Ozzy doing something stupid which seems to be the big so yeah so yeah but but from a metal fan you know I, I you know I don't know this is true right this is not a fair thing maybe to even say I'm just can only give like an opinion of what, what they're portrayed as Sharon has always been portrayed in the metal community as being a, basically an ice queen yes a cold hearted bitch uh, I'm not saying that she, I'm just, this is what she's been portrayed as. And that might be completely unfair. It might be, I don't know. But that show showed, it, it gave that view as well to me. Mm-hmm. I was like, Jesus Christ, his family are cold, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got great perspectives on all of those items. I, I think it's quite interesting with the MTV thing as well, as I feel like MTV after losing the Osbournes or it ending, uh, basically that was the end for MTV as a music TV station. You know, what is MTV yeah. these days? It's a joke. And they constantly were trying to capture this sort of real life where MTV, we're hip, we're young, we're down, we're doing all these new things. And they weren't able to. Ah, they tried, didn't they? Because they tried. And what, what they tried to do, I'm not saying that this is what they went out to do, but what it often appeared to be was to almost try and find a slightly dysfunctional family yep. and film them for the shock. Because I know that they did, I don't even know if it was MTV, but there was like a Hulk Hogan one. There was a Brett Michaels one. There's a Gene Simmons one. Oh, Brett Michaels, I know he did like the weird marry me show or someone could date him and stuff Something like, like that. that. The rock rock of love of Brett Michaels according to this, but I've never oh, seen, I've never seen that. But I have seen clips like of the Gene Simmons one and the Hulk Hogan one and mm. I get that this was like maybe maybe the start of like reality TV becoming a really big thing everywhere anyway. Mm-hmm. But it seemed to be more based around the notion of it wasn't about filming families that were happy and everything was going great. It was about would Ozzy make good TV? Yeah. Yes, Sharon will pay you loads of money for that. We reckon he will, but we might need to be invasive. You know, we might need you guys to do things on camera sometimes to provoke him. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's but you get it, right? If I'm making a TV show, I don't want to sit down with 2.4 children and everyone having dinner and having nice stuff like that. What people want... No, no, no. I don't blame them for it. Yeah, of course But it's don't. not yeah. nice. No, it's not <laughs> nice, but you also want to... what general public i feel one and this may be very dismissive of people but it's just the generalized view which is people want to see the rich and the famous are like us that they are fucking idiots that they have the same problems you know that yeah. they can have this big house and ozzy still lose his beers and stuff like that or set his blender on fire or get confused about being stuck on the weather channel and have to call jack because he can't change the channel all yeah. this stuff you know it's the question is though then do you think the majority of the audience, not you, but the audience that watched it, were laughing at or with the family? At. Yeah, at, right? Well, 100% at Aussie. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, laughing at. I think that's what most of reality TV ends up descending into. Yeah. Despite the people that go on that thinking they come out of it, mind celebrity. For the most part, the entertainment of the general populace doesn't come from the fact that you're great people. It comes from the fact that we watch you and we laugh at you, you're buffoons. Uh, not talking about everyone, I'm not talking about celebrities, I'm talking about anything, Big Brother, anything like that. People don't watch Big Brother because they want to see 12 nice people sitting in the house getting on well together. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like you said, it's about the drama and rightly, well, rightly or wrongly, but we're, we're en- people, humanity is entertained by the failings of other people. That's what we laugh at. And Ozzy was put on a pedestal with all of his issues and they went, hey, check this idiot out. Yeah. And that's what it was, because that's what, you know, look back at some trailers of it. The trailers don't even really show people like Sharon and that. They just show Ozzy going from one calamity to the next. That's (laughs) what they were selling. You're not wrong. And it's, 
it's very much true. And the last one then, last question. If this was on now, let's say there were like a one-off Osborne special, would you watch it if it was on now? No, I don't think so. Yeah? I don't know. I, it's a bit difficult now. If it was like, if Ozzy was still in reasonable health and all that sort of stuff, okay. Do you know what I mean? That, that's, a, that's a slightly different thing. I feel like it might be point. interesting now because I guess now everybody, like now Ozzy's not the only famous name. So the spotlight doesn't have to be just on Ozzy. It can be on Sharon from the Osborne show and from X Factor and from all these other things. We can also see what she's up to. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like back then it was one really famous dude and his family. Um, you yeah. know, his, poor, his poor suffering family. Yeah, Whereas now it will be like all, all kind of relatively, well, not all, but householdish names, you know. Yeah, I think that'd be, I think it was like a one-off hour special or something, catching up with the Osbournes as it were. And it was I like, let's see where they were. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe like nominate, maybe we can leave Ozzy alone and we can nominate another another band. They <laughs> can go and watch to do a new series on. Okay, then you said it. Let's nominate a band. Who are we, who are we going to have? Replacing and being the new Osborne show. Hmm. Ooh. At home with the Flins. Oh, no. He just wants <laughs> to just stand there and play guitar. That's not like, he might be like driving around to like Adam Deuce's house at night and like throwing pissing on his <laughs> garden gnomes and stuff. <laughs> oh, God. That Adam. I got a controversial one. Oh. The Anselmos. Mm. Let's peel back that curtain, right? Yeah. God. <laughs> that will be a show, right? <laughs> oh man, there are some funny ones. Now you want to kind of you know like <laughs> you want to go like for somebody like uh, <clears throat> some proper like black metal guy. Do you know what I mean? That like, real true traditional black metal. So that when they show us him living in his nice house in his normal clothes, and and then he goes like, here's my wardrobe, and he pulls out his shirt and tie, and he's got his other wardrobe with all his makeup and stuff. You know, because obviously everyone thinks that, you know, these true black metalers, they just live in the woods. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Behemoth could work. We can do that. We, can do that. we already know Nurgle's got to, is not your true black metaler in that sense. Yeah. So yeah, let's <laughs> really peel back the curtain. There you go. That's our look at the Osbournes, as it were. Our knowledge is not as extensive as it probably is for other people. That's kind of the point. Our view at it. If you've got others, if you really love it, if you think different thoughts to us, let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?